This is an example of a pendulum. It's a pendulum hanging from the ceiling, attached to a rigid rod, metal or something, with a mass, a point mass at the bottom. I'm assuming the rod is massless, point mass at the bottom, and it's going to swing back and forth on a frictionless pivot point. We're ignoring air resistance, all that sort of thing. I want to know what the motion of this is going to look like. And uh, I'm going to study this. To begin with, I'm going to study it using Newton's laws, because that's the foundation of physics that we all learn, and it's a good way to get a hold of it. So uh, it, I, my goal ultimately, I say I want to study the motion. Ultimately, my goal is to find an equation for the motion as a function of time, theta of t. Uh, that's actually hard, so I'll, uh, I'll start. The, the starting point of that is I want to get an equation that is a differential equation for theta, a, a, a function of a, 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 an equation that has theta and the derivative or second derivative of theta in it, something to get that. And this sounds complicated, you know, differential equations and all that. The whole point is that Newton's second law has acceleration in it, and acceleration is the second derivative of position. So what are you going to do, right? Uh, and in this story, I have, uh, I've, I've already, just for convenience, defined my coordinates, x and y. x is horizontal, y is vertical, away from the Earth. And I've chosen the origin to be the pivot point. That's a really convenient origin for us to choose, because it makes the equation simple. In fact, I'll go ahead and write down the position of this as a function of time. The, the x position of this mass as a function of time is, well, if I imagine a right triangle here, this side is opposite theta, so there's a th sine of theta in there. It looks to me like x is equal to L times the sine of theta, and it looks to me like my y position is equal to L times well, actually not L, negative L, times the cosine of theta. Because when theta is zero, it's maximally downward, maximally negative. So OK, uh, that's my x and my y. Uh, that's my position. And how am I going to analyze this? How do I analyze a, a story using Newton's laws? Step one is always to draw a free body diagram of my system. Uh, my system is just the mass down here. And so my free body diagram will just be that. I know that gravity points down. I've got a force of gravity downward. And I know that the tension force in my rigid rod is going to be directed along the rod. There's not going to be any forces where the rod is pushing this perpendicular to the rod. That's just not the way this, this will work. There's just a tension force in the rod that's going to be along this way. That's my tension force. And I can even copy over my theta from over there, since I, I, I like copying theta in exactly the same place where it is in my drawing into my free body diagram. And I've drawn this. Uh, I guess I can immediately know I've got my coordinates that I'd already chosen. So I can immediately write down things about these forces. My tension force, for example. Uh, the x component of my tension force is leftward, which is my negative x direction. So I can write this as, and I'm going to, everyone who writes these in, writes vectors in different notation. Today I'm going to use x hat, y hat, and z hat notation for vectors. Uh, you can also do a three component vector. That's fine. I'll, I'll put them both down. Um, my x component is negative. My y component of tension is positive, And there's no z in this problem. And my x component is opposite. So negative magnitude of the tension force times uh, sine of theta, positive magnitude of the tension force times cosine of theta, and zero. Or if I wanted to write this down in x hat, y hat notation, I could write it as minus f tension sine theta x hat plus f tension magnitude cosine theta y hat. That's another valid way of writing this. Good stuff. Uh, I can also write down my gravitational force in components, and that's much easier. F gravitational is in three component form, it's zero minus m times the magnitude of g and zero, or in component form, it's minus m magnitude of g uh, y hat. So, okay, I've got my forces. That's what a free body diagram is for. The whole point of a free body diagram is to be able to write your forces in components. That was our goal of drawing the free body diagram. And the next step after we've done this 
The next step is always to write down Newton's second law in components. Newton's second law, we know, says that F net equals mass times acceleration. And for us, our net force is just the sum of all the forces, force of gravity plus the tension force. That's our net force. So I just, I just write this down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use x hat y hat as my primary notation here. So if I do this, that tells me I just write these down. I've got minus magnitude of the tension force times sine of theta x hat plus magnitude of the tension force times cosine theta times y hat minus m magnitude of g y hat. And that equals mass times ax x hat plus mass times ay y hat. There we go. That's my equation for the uh, for for Newton's second law. That's nice enough. What do I do with it now that I have it? Well, we can do a lot of things. I guess I want to figure out my accelerations. I want to figure that out, and there are lots of ways I can do this. I kind of want to get them on, on their own, so I kind of want to divide every term by m, I think. Just divide both sides of the equation by m. That'll get them by themselves. It'll also cancel out masses in a bunch of places here. And so now I've got an equation that has acceleration vector on one side and forces, well, force over mass on the other. That's kind of nice. Okay, so I've got this broken down. I'm going to go ahead and write down the two separate component equations at this point, because this is only a true equation if the x hat parts match up and the y hat parts match up separately. Nothing to do with x hats can ever mess with the y hats. That's the whole point of an, ortho, uh, an orthonormal coordinate system. So let me do that. Let me bring my x hat equation over here. I've got ax equals minus I'm going to do a shorthand. I'm going to call this magnitude of Ft. I'm going to call it just my tension force. I'll, I'll say uh, magnitude of Ft is defined to be just T for tension. And I'm going to go ahead and define the magnitude of my acceleration vector. Uh, my gravitational acceleration is just G. Just to simplify my equations, make it look a little more mathy. So Ax equals minus my tension divided by the mass times sine of theta. That's the x hat coefficient equal on the right equals the x hat coefficient on the left. And for y, I'm going to have a y equals plus tension over mass times cosine theta minus g. All right, that's my, uh, that's my setup. That's my ax and my ay. And just to be clear, I know that ax is equal to d squared x dt squared, and ay is equal to d squared y dt squared. That's what those are. Acceleration is the second derivative of position. Uh, there's a notation that I really like for this, for, second, for derivatives of, with respect to time, that's common in physics, where I'm going to write this as being x double dot. That each dot on top is a time derivative, and this will be y double dot. So I've got those pieces. And, you know, I can relate those to my position in terms of theta over here. I can put that together. Just, just to start, for example, I can see here that, um, I didn't leave myself enough space, did I? Uh, I can see here L is a constant and sine of theta. I can do a, a d by dt. I can do a time derivative. x dot is equal to L is a constant. I'm going to use the chain rule. The derivative of sine of theta is cosine of theta. And then I have to use the chain rule, d theta dt. I multiply by theta dot. Remember, theta dot means d theta dt. This is just the chain rule that I've used. Similarly here, I can find that y dot is equal to, well, co derivative of cosine is positive sine. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but there's a negative here, so I get positive sine. So L times sine theta times theta dot by the same chain rule reasoning. And just as a 
reality check, or a, a, a sen to check this is sensible, if my theta is increasing and it's positive, so in this situation, theta increasing, this is moving up and to the right, that's what this says. These are both positive numbers. I feel good about that. Okay, I've got those for x dot and y dot. What about the double dots that I need? Let me, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze it in here just because I've got this small board that I'm using. So let me figure out uh, x double dot. What's it going to be? This now has two functions of time. Hidden in here, theta is a function of time, and the derivative of theta is a function of time. So there's going to be a product rule story going on in here. Um, so I will have the product rule. I will have L times cosine of theta times the derivative of theta dot, which is just theta double dot. That's my second derivative with respect to time. But now I've got to do the product rule plus theta dot times L, the derivative of cosine is minus sine of theta times theta dot. So I've got two factors of theta dot now in this one. And I can do the same thing for y. I will find that y double dot is equal to, again, same thing, L sine of theta, theta double dot. And then the other way is plus theta dot times uh, L cosine theta, theta dot. So if I put this all together, let me bring this over here now and put those in for AX and AY. Just put that together. Um, it, I mean, it is a mess. It's kind of, this is going to look messy for a minute. But I'm going to put that together. I'm going to say then, okay, let's do it. L cosine theta, theta double dot, minus L, do I know the L's here? I could just divide by L. Let me factor out the L at least, just to save myself some writing eventually. Um, maybe it's not going to help. Uh, I'll do it. Minus L times sine of theta times theta dot squared, that's my left hand side, equals minus T over M sine of theta. All right? And I can do the same thing for Y. For Y, I'm going to say that L times sine of theta, theta double dot, plus L is factored out, cosine theta, theta dot squared, equals, oh, this is going to be squeezed, sorry, T over M cosine theta minus G. Okay, I've got those pieces. Now, how do I deal with this? Because this is a bit of a mess. Uh, I, I've got, I, <laughs> this is a mess. Where are my unknowns? My unknowns are theta as a function of time and also the tension as a function of time. I expect that tension to change as this swings back and forth. So T, T is also a function of time. If I could get rid of that tension, that I have an I'd have an equation just for theta, which is my goal. I don't really care what the tension is as a function of time unless I want to know whether the rod's going to snap. So how do I fix that? Well, to get rid of tension, let me look at both of these. What if I multiplied this top equation, both sides of it, by cosine of theta? And what if I multiplied this whole equation, both sides, by sine of theta? Let me just make a note of that over here. Cosine theta times all of this, and sine theta times all of this. If I did that and then added them together, I'll get a minus t over m sine theta cosine theta here, and a plus t over m sine theta cosine theta here. If I add them together, that's going to cancel out. Yay. So my t's will cancel out, and I'll, the only function left in my equation is going to be theta. That sounds promising. In fact, in this term, I will have a minus sine cosine theta double dot. And in this term, I will have a plus sine cosine theta double dot. That means that these terms will also cancel. This is really good news. This actually is promising all of a sudden. Uh, and I've got the L's. I'll keep the L's for now. I'm not going to do too much at once. I want to divide both sides by L, but we'll do it later. So when I do that, when I add these together and put it together, I'm going to get L 
cosine squared theta times theta double dot plus L sine squared theta times theta double dot. Those cancel. These cancel equals minus G sine theta. And hey, uh, factoring out, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. These combine into just an L theta double dot. I get then uh, that theta double dot equals minus G over L sine of theta. That's what I come up with for this, equa for this uh, differential equation, an equation for theta in, uh, for theta double dot uh, as a, that we could use to solve for theta as a function of time. Now, just to be clear, you can't solve this explicitly. There's not, there's not a closed form solution to this differential equation. That said, the famous result is that there is an approximate solution. If theta is much less than 1, then this is approximately equal to minus g over L times theta if theta is much less than 1, uh, if it's a very small angle. Uh, much, theta much less than 1 radians <coughs> is what I'm getting at there. And in that case, I know the functions whose second derivative are a negative number times that function. Sine and cosine would be the functions that would do this. Uh, and in this case, in this limit, approximately in this limit, theta is equal to, say, uh, a cosine of omega t plus some constant phi, where omega squared equals g over l. That is, uh, that, that is a general solution to this approximate equation that we come up with. And that's just a harmonic oscillator. That's why pendulums can have a steady period. A pendulum at small angles is a, is a harmonic oscillator. It's great. But this general equation with the double dot, theta double dot equals minus g over l times sine theta, that's there too. Nothing else you can do about it. And if you wanted to, you could go back then and figure out the tension as a function, uh, a, a, an equation for the tension if you, once you know the thetas. You can do that too. I'm not going to right now, but that is how you solve this problem using Newton's laws. It was a bit of a mess, a lot going on, but that's how you do it. And I hope it was, uh, I hope it's interesting. There are other ways of doing it. And maybe I'll follow up on that too.